Okay, I'm going to do a little bit of Joseph. Because it's easier to teach Joseph than Jesus. And I feel like we're in some kind of transition. So I'm going to be talking about things that I think are happening. And the weird thing is, is when anybody teaches, uh, you want them to tell you what really is happening. And we're in some place where I feel like uh, the guys who know what's happening, that they know what's happening, uh, it's starting to look like that uh, there's... Uh, no assurance that anybody knows what's happening. So we're in this coronavirus 2020 hashtag. Coronavirus 2020, uh, things are changing and we're right in this. We've been in this space of transition for a long time. Things are changing. Uh, the, the church as a body is now all small groups. So to me, we now it's clear that everybody has to be the pastor everybody has to be the teacher because you broke up in small groups and ready or not here we are but you've prepared for this all your life you've gone to enough church you are the church uh, you can do the work of teaching because it's reading and remembering read out loud and remember so <clears throat> i want to get to joseph and jesus because jesus is hard to, hard to teach and I think the church had a bad habit of teaching works. It's what we teach because we're planted in the earth. And in the earth, you, uh, you, you get what you deserve. You must earn your way. And Jesus is bringing us to a place where uh, he pays the price. And that is hard on our imagination we want to pay the price we want to pay our own way so today i was thinking about joseph so joseph uh, we're introduced to israel as a nation and israel is jacob jacob's name is changed to israel and jacob uh, kind of a scoundrel he's uh he's the the beginner he's the the one who forms and starts this nation it's his offspring so his 12 children, and in some way they become Israel, the 12 tribes. <clears throat> now Joseph uh, comes into the story as a heroic figure, and Joseph is always taught as, <clears throat> I'm not saying always, but <clears throat> I'm going to give a lot of generalizations. Joseph is taught as an example. And Joseph is a good guy. He's a good character. He works hard. He is is uh, he's very skilled, he has special gifts, he can interpret dreams, he's a great organizer, he's a leader of men, he can advise Pharaoh. So Joseph, and Joseph also, uh, takes his bad fortune and, and turns it around and, and understands that God can use bad circumstances to bring about good results. And it's the opposite of what we typically see. When bad things happen, bad things happen. It's, uh, you know, you do bad, and then you reap the consequences of your actions. But Joseph uh, is, is redeemed, and then he becomes a redeemer. So Joseph, we see as if we act like him, we will be redeemers, and we want to be like Christ. We want to be redeeming. <clears throat> so Joseph sold into slavery. Uh, just a, a great story, wild story. Uh, Joseph, a little bit haughty, a little bit uh, better than his brothers. He was a favorite. So definitely somebody to, you can get why uh, people are jealous of him. They sell him into slavery. They tell their, their dad, he's dead. You've lost a son. This was your favorite. This was the one you gave the coat of many colors. This was your favorite. So... The brothers, angry, jealous, envious, whatever they are, they they were going to kill him. They decide to take the better road and sell him as a slave. He goes into in Egypt. Uh, we move on. So we started at Genesis 37 there. I'm going to skip 38. I'm going to go to Joseph and Potiphar's wife. So Joseph sold into slavery. He's the uh, servant of Potiphar. Uh, he ends up 
<clears throat> being imprisoned because Potiphar's wife is deceitful and says he's trying to rape me. Joseph, again, unfairly put into prison, sold as a slave, now unfairly, now unfairly put in prison. And then we find uh, the king's servants, the king of Egypt, his cupbearer and baker. So the cupbearer, maybe he's tasting his drink, making sure it isn't poisoned. The baker giving him great food. They're both in prison. Joseph, the interpreter of dreams, can interpret their dreams. They both get out. Uh, they both get out. Joseph is correct in the way he interprets the dreams. Uh, the baker is killed, which Joseph predicted, and the cupbearer goes back to serve Pharaoh. Uh, and Joseph said, hey, I'm, I'm helping you. Please remember me. They don't remember him. He stays in prison. Then Pharaoh has a dream. And who can interpret dreams? Nobody. Pharaoh asks all his uh, wise men, what's going on? What, who can interpret this dream? Two years in prison. They call on the, uh, the cupbearer then remembers. Oh, that, I knew a guy who could interpret dreams. F sends Pharaoh to Joseph. I had a dream. No one can tell me what it means. Joseph can, and Joseph tells them they're going to have famine. Uh, you better act in this way. So Joseph, a great planner, a great leader, has great vision and foresight, is in charge, put in charge of saving Egypt. So they store up grain. They're going to have a, a great famine. This is what uh, Pharaoh's dream means. You're going to have seven years of, seven fat years of great harvest. Then you're going to have seven lean years where nothing is harvested. So you better store as much as you can during the years, the fat years. So, uh, you know, build a lot of extra grain storage. Build bigger barns. It reminds me of what Jesus talked about, building bigger barns. They store up huge quantities of grain. Joseph is a hero. Now they can actually survive the years of famine. So Joseph sold into slavery, in prison, betrayed, finally called on by the king, the advisors of the king. Joseph can interpret the dreams. He does the hero's work, and we want to be like Joseph. Joseph is taught as someone to emulate, someone to uh, copy. So then Israel, Jacob, sends his sons to Joseph. And this is the great story. These stories are so interesting. They come back to Joseph. The brothers come to Joseph. And Joseph, now a man of means and power, can save them. And when they find out that it's Joseph, the one who they tried to kill, that leads to a... And that is a difficult reunion. Oh, you're the guy we tried to kill. And now you're over us. And we have to ask you for mercy. And he becomes their redeemer. Taking all the punishment. And instead of uh, them being charged as guilty. Them seeing judgment. They receive mercy. Now here's where I want to go with this. So Israel. Jacob moves his family into Egypt under Joseph's care. So Joseph, the hero of the story, Israel rescued. But what are they rescued to? Again, this is a story of earthly struggles. They're all going to die. They go into Joseph's hands and they all live. They're brought into Egypt. Now they live there and, are, and the family grows into a nation in Egypt. But it's a nation where their salvation becomes in slavery. They become slaves in Egypt, and they need redemption. It turns out that whatever Joseph offers, it's some temporary help that Joseph couldn't actually redeem them. He kept them alive so that they could be slaves and suffer under a new Pharaoh's rule. 
So we're always charged to do things to help people. We're always wanting to be redeemers. But I tell you, as I wrestle with this, Joseph couldn't redeem them. He redeemed them into slavery. He was in slavery, and all he could offer, turns out, was slavery. The redemption was into slavery. And what looked like rescue turned out to be uh, tragic, turned out to be torment, turned out to be enslaved, being enslaved and persecuted and dying and crying out. And then Moses rescues, and they're taken from Egypt, and they're brought into wilderness. And they're still, Moses can't rescue them. Joseph can't rescue them. What looks like rescue is bondage. Moses can't rescue them. What looks like if you will be obedient, I will rescue you. They end up in the wilderness. Uh, and then Joshua takes them into the promised land, and Joshua can't rescue them. They're in the promised land for a short time, and then things go south. They have bad kings. And David can't rescue them. And uh, Solomon can't rescue them. And then whatever kings are, they can't rescue them. And all along, prophets are saying, God's going to do something and we'll finally be rescued. So what is it that's always happening in our hands from the time we leave the garden? In the garden, all things come from God. And we simply are children who work and look at God as some deliverer, some somebody who gives gifts. And then we rebel and say, no, I'm not interested in being your child. I want to be a man. I want to take things in my own hands. And from then on, every single person can't accomplish the rescue. It's a partial rescue. And it's like when you're thirsty and you need some water, and you drink some life-giving water, and then in another couple hours, you thirst again. There's something so temporary about all that we can accomplish. And this is where Ecclesiastes just, uh, just says over and over, uh, the, the accomplishment is in vain. It's all in vain. And and Solomon is just racking his brain and saying, what in the world can we do? We can do nothing. It's all in vain. Now we're 13 minutes in, I can see. So what is it that Jesus wants us to do? What are, why can we teach Joseph and Moses and Joshua and Daniel, dare to be a Daniel, be like Joseph, you know, be like Moses, a leader? And we're really called... Jesus calls us to not lead, to somehow serve. What is it that Jesus is saying? And we teach that Jesus is a moral, our moral guide. If we, if we will act like him, then what? We'll be a redeemer. We'll re be able to redeem. Jesus, I think, more than calling us to tasks, calls us to lay down things. He calls us to lay down our life. Lay down your life. And here's the way we can act like Jesus. Only in giving up. Jesus gave up. He gave up his life. He calls us, if we're going to follow him, we've got to give up our life. And, uh, you know, that is a hard thing to teach. How do you teach people to give away all that they have collected? I'm going to keep wrestling with that, so I'm going to post this up. Uh, wrestling with how do you give it away? It is a hard thing to teach. Give it away. And in some way, all you can do is try and act it out. Uh, we, we don't seem to be able to accomplish what we ought. So Jesus calls us to be the lowest, the servant of all. And that's the teaching that really follows what Jesus is requiring. This is Tom.
Negotiating with Jesus. Like and subscribe. I'm out.